YouTube comments are filled with some of the darndest things. What's up everybody, Mesa Windu here. I hope you guys are enjoying the new year so far. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more, as well as hit the bell icon next to it so that you're among the first to see any new content going forward. So, a couple of months ago, I finally got to see All Quiet on the Western Front. I could spend an hour talking about the impact that that movie had on me. Um, it's very gory, it's very violent, it's very unsettling, and that is the point. It is very much the quintessential anti-war film. I think it's the greatest kind of anti-war film there is. Uh, if you want to scare somebody out of of uh, of going into war for the glory and fame and stuff like that, that is the movie that you would watch in order to scare them out of it. Um, it has a very powerful message, and I enjoyed it, even though it was hard to watch at times, a lot of times. The atmosphere just made it absolutely terrifying. It, the movie really gives you a sense of the horrors that all of the soldiers experienced in this ultimately completely pointless war. Um, so I just wanted to get that out of the way first. So this kind of sets up the story and the point of this video. So, like most people who have nothing else better to do, I surf YouTube videos a lot. My recommendations are filled with historical videos, uh, videos talking about like socioeconomic political stuff, and of course, Star Wars. And so uh, right after watching um, All Quiet on the Western Front, I don't know if I had been searching through clips and stuff like that to kind of like get a repeat of the scenes and take a closer look at some scenes. I came across one of the scenes and it was talking about uh, the scene was about um, the really, really scary tank scene. Uh, this is the first time that all of the German soldiers had seen uh, tanks for the first time. And these things were like monsters. Very, very scary. And needless to say, that scene was very, very, very gory. Um, obviously, I'm not going to show any clips here because I don't really intend on reliving a lot of those. Uh, it's a really good movie, but it's not a movie that I think it's uh, good for comfort watching, so to speak, and I think that's by design. Very, very violent, very, very graphic. Um, not really a fun watch at all. Uh, not that it's supposed to be. And, of course, the comment section was filled with, you know, like, uh, interesting information, like fun facts. And people had various positions on what happens in the scene. They, they kind of, like, pinpoint certain moments in the scene that, like, really strike them. And I came across one comment, and I don't remember the, the person's name. One of the comments essentially said, this is kind of what I expected Star Wars to be like. And I'm not going to lie, it kind of took me back a little bit, and I kind of audibly laughed and gasped at the same time because... My first reaction was, okay, you mean like what, like the production quality? They're like, no, like the, the graphic violence, goriness. And then I was like, ah, I see. I, I got it. I got it. Uh, no disrespect to anybody who does agree with that. Like if, if, if you like violence in your movies and franchises, more power to you. Um, but you know, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't think that level of intensity, that level of graphicness um, I don't think that level of intense violence really fits in the atmosphere of what Star Wars is. And let me elaborate on that, right? I'm not saying that Star Wars isn't violent. I'm not saying that Star Wars can't push boundaries a little bit. But what I am saying is that, you know, with All Quiet on the Western Front, as somebody who's seen the movie now, with All Quiet on the Western Front, it's very much a movie that, like, the graphic you know, violence, the, the, the scary atmosphere. These are all stuff that are, these are all things that, you know, kind of, it, it, it's based on like historical significance to it. Like these are things that people actually kind of experienced. And I feel like the level of graphic, that level of graphic horror uh, translated to Star Wars, I feel like the impact of it wouldn't be there. So if you're trying to say that like you want like a gritty Star Wars movie for that reason, I don't think that's the best way to kind of hammer home a message like that in Star Wars. Now, again, like I love my gritty Star Wars. Andor and Rogue One are some of my favorite, favorite, favorite Star Wars projects. Uh, Lords of the Sith is probably one of the grittier Star Wars projects out there. Uh, obviously, Star Wars does not pull punches when it comes to talking about serious issues, uh, especially in recent years. Uh, Andor and Rogue One have kind of showed that. And Revenge of the Sith has shown that. I mean, Anakin did monstrous things, at the very least heavily implied to do monstrous things in Episode 3 once he turned to the dark side. 
But if the if the goal for this kind of you know violence and 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 uh, and gore and graphicness is to hammer home like the horrors of like space warfare or what it would be like living in the Star Wars galaxy and you get like a more like sobering reality as to what it's like. I think you can do all of that without needing to go straight all quiet on the Western front. You know what I'm saying? And it feels like it feels like a lot of people kind of looked at that scene and and a lot of the other scenes a lot of the more brutal parts of the scene and they said yeah like i just want you know violence but star wars like i want stormtroopers you know uh you know, with their legs shot off and all this other stuff and it's like i don't know if you want it because because it it serves a higher purpose to pinpoint exactly like a message you're trying to tell or you're just saying that you want like your violent movies you want your violent space war movie um, I'm not necessarily judging. I'm not judging you and saying like, oh, you're not allowed to like violent Star Wars. I'm just saying that I don't think that that kind of, you know, production, uh, something on the level of All Quiet on the Western Front is necessarily the greatest translation for, for Star Wars. Um, Star Wars uh, and or uh, Rogue One, they, they managed to pinpoint and hammer home some of the more horrific real life parallels, you know, like uh, torture. Um, it remind a lot of the ISB stuff reminds me a lot of Nazi Germany, very much uh, sobering realities. And you don't really need to see a lot of blood and gore and people getting their heads, you know, cut off and blown off and all this other stuff. Gosh, this is a really, really graphically described video. I'm going to have fun with the monetization stuff here. But but no, I think there are definitely ways to tell a very serious and mature and, and almost sobering Star Wars story. I mean, they've done it before in, in small bursts. They've done it before in, in special situations like Andor and Rogue One. Like, we've definitely seen sides of the Rebel Alliance and, and, this, and the Empire that we had never seen before in the past. And even if you want to look at Star Wars The Clone Wars, there are some messages that are told in those stories that are very very mature they just don't have you know like some of the more graphic you know things that you would expect out of like a, a war movie like saving private ryan or all quiet on the western front or or any of the pacific or band of brothers shows but i just think it's important to when you're asking for more of a, a visceral and, and 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 graphic um type of story i feel like you should just you know it, it i think it should serve a purpose I don't think it should just be there just to be there and for people to go, oh, my God, that's awesome. It's like, no, if you're going to get graphic and, and, you know, you know, tell these like stories that could make a lot of people cry and walk out of a theater. Um, I think that it needs to serve a purpose. I don't think it should just be mindless violence. I think Star Wars is a little too strong for Star Wars is too powerful and it has too strong of a an overarching message for it to just be mindless violence. And, uh, you know, when I saw the comment, I was kind of like. Oh man, like I don't think you don't I don't think it's that you don't know what Star Wars is really about, but I think you're trying to give Star Wars something that is just not compatible with what Star Wars is. I don't I don't and and when you try and I think if you were to try and tell a story like All Quiet on the Western Front in Star Wars, I think that it would almost like naturally kind of just, you know, lessen the impact of what a violent story like All Quiet on the Western Front would do. Um, within a Star Wars project. You know, like, All Quiet on the Western Front is based on the stories of World War I soldiers that threw their lives away in this meaningless war. Now, I think you can make parallels. I think you can absolutely tell parallel stories that are inspired by that kind of situation. But I don't know if it would have the same impact as the Netflix original movie. Like I said, Plenty of stuff to, to to look forward to regarding Star Wars. Um, Star Wars absolutely has a capacity to grow and tell stories that had never been done before. Andor is not your ideal, quote-unquote, Star Wars story, but it's I think it's every bit as special, and it still maintains a lot of that charm, even though a few times there were there were moments where I kind of forgot I was watching a Star Wars uh, show. But I think you can tell gritty stories. I think you can really get into, like, you know, the brutality of war, uh, without needing to go all all out, um, needing to go all out like you know graphic. Frankly, to be perfectly honest with you, 
expecting or even hoping for something that violent to come out of Star Wars was fairly unrealistic. I'm not going to lie. You know, it's owned by Disney. I don't see a scenario where they're going to be showing movies where people get their heads blown off and guts spilling out of their uh, guts spilling out of their stomach. Uh, there's no scenario, no matter how gritty you want to make it, you can give it and or you can give it Rogue One. There is no scenario where they would get that into the nitty gritty. But the good thing is, is that Star Wars under Disney has shown that they are capable of telling more mature stories. And even though it's not going to be as violent or as graphic or as visceral as All Quiet on the Western Front, they do have a capacity to go more mature and and, and go a little more violent. If, if that's your thing, even though... I don't know if that should be your only thing. I think you should just be going in for a good story and you can tell a good war story without getting obscenely, you know, graphic and terrifying and and violent. You can tell that good war story, still send that message without needing to kind of like give us a close up of all the worst parts of what happens when you sit on a grenade. You know what I'm saying? That's all I've been trying to say. Sorry, it's been rambling a little too much, but I just wanted to uh, get my thoughts out on that because it stuck with me. Seeing that comment just stuck with me. I was like, are we okay, guys? Like, I think we're kind of missing our eye on the ball here. Uh, I think we kind of need to, like, reestablish what Star Wars is supposed to be about in the grand scheme of things. I'm not saying that everything needs to be candy, sunshine, and rainbows. Andor and Rogue One have proven that in the past, that they have a capacity to tell more mature stories. But at the same time, I don't think you need, like, you know, Saving Private Ryan or All Quiet on the Western Front. Or at the very least, you don't need their level of violence. Um, you can still have that same impact of some of a story like Saving Private Ryan, you say like rebels are going to save like a, a, a the last surviving brother of some alien species or something like that, and they're going behind enemy lines and stuff like that. Like these kinds of stories are timeless, and you can still tell them. It, it worries me that people are saying like they're looking at all quiet. It, it just worries me that you're looking at all quiet on the Western Front, and your first thought walking out is going. Hey, you know what should have been like that? We should have gotten a Star Wars movie like that. And I'm like, mm, I don't know about all that. But that's all I got for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed me rambling. I am curious to hear you guys' thoughts on this. Uh, do you agree with me? Is there room to maneuver and talk about more mature, you know, all quiet on the Western Front level violence in Star Wars? Or would you prefer if Rogue One and Andor was kind of like, you know, the, the ideal situation for a, a more gritty Star Wars? And should Star Wars get even grittier? Is that something that Star Wars can kind of embrace and, and, and be successful in doing? Or is this something that, you know, with all of the magic and all of the, the messages that has been, you know, pushed that, that have been pushed out uh, since 1977, is that something that, you know, just isn't compatible with what we're getting from All Quiet on the Western Front? I am curious to hear you guys' thoughts, so if you would like to leave a comment, feel free to do so. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more, as well as hit the bell icon so that you're among the first to see any new content going forward. This is Mesa Windu out. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. And remember, the Force will be with you always.